Hello and welcome. Good evening. Good morning. It's the evening. You're watching this. It's the morning and you're watching Pitching In. I'm Jason Mackey alongside the one and only Michael McHenry as he fixes his camera. You look great now, Fort. You look fantastic. Stop it. I feel, I feel like I'm, I need to hit the gym a little bit more tomorrow. Hit it like literally or are you going to? Yeah, I got that round face going. I need to get the chin back, you know, like on, you, buddy, start, start running with you is what I need to do. But you, That's right. you're like a gazelle. Like, <laughs> If you saw me running, you wouldn't be calling me a gazelle. <laughs> I'll ride behind you like Mick. You're Rocky, I'm Mick, and I'm yelling at you. I'll have a little maybe, bicycle. Maybe a wounded gazelle or something, I'm not sure. I'm excited, <laughs> by the way. This upcoming road trip is two of my favorite running cities. Uh, Chicago, mm -hmm. Lakeshore Drive is impeccable. Um, and Cincinnati is sneaky good, by the way. I really like that. I used um, to so walk home from Wrigley, by the way. I loved it so much. Walk home from where? What do, walk what do you from mean? Wrigley to the hotel. It's like... I don't know, three, four miles maybe. What? Didn't you yeah. guys stay at the Westin? Mm-hmm. On Michigan Avenue? If it was a pretty day, I would that's not short, brother. Nope. I used to love it. Like walking in cities as I got older was one of my favorite things. Like yeah. I'd walk 12 miles in the city. And it was way it made my knees feel good, my hips, everything it was awesome. Old man walk. Yep. Old man walk before it was cool. <laughs> I think I was a young man walk. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Awesome. Uh, we're going to get into the road trip. We're going to get into a lot of stuff. Um, you know, Ben Charrington's comments today on the radio about the Pirates being competitive in 2024. I think that's interesting to delve into. Um, some guys individually I want to ask for about G1 Bay, Luis Ortiz. I think we're going to debate a little Jared Triolo, Andrew McCutcheon. Um, there's some comments over in the hockey world that I want to get Ford's take on. Uh, Mike Babcock, not comments, but a, a scenario with Mike Babcock and some players. Um, maybe give our opening day lineups for 2024 but we are brought to you as always by the north shore tavern if you love baseball you'll love the north shore tavern and by the way i had lunch there this past week while doing a chat it was fantastic interior is wall-to-wall -wall pirates their appetizers entrees cocktails and of course steak and seafood on a sizzling lava stone open every day the north shore tavern across from pnc park is pittsburgh's home for steak on a stone so for i'm not frozen here. i'm i'm just shocked what i, I, want, I want lunch on on a stone well let's go what, we yeah, we do need to arrange this, by the way, my phone um, in this stupid 162 <laughs> game schedule that does not end. Neither of us have any time to do it, but we should make a date for the playoffs. So watch some playoff baseball down there yes. and have some dinner. All it's right. Correct. Hot Hot ball. Ball. You've never been there. I, I have not. And I'm waiting for you. You're waiting for me. Okay. All yeah. Right. I, well, yeah. And, and in two, I'm going to put you on the spot right now. World series prediction, not who wins. Who's playing? Oh, geez. Okay. And I'll tell you who I got. Uh, why don't you tell me who you have and let me think for a second. I said it six weeks ago, Baltimore, Atlanta. See, I like Atlanta in the National League. Um, I don't know who I, I – mm -hmm. Is tough. it too boring to go Houston and Atlanta? No. But I mean, that's, that's probably why I what my heart and head both say right now. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's boring and something weird is going to happen. That's why Baltimore's my pick. Well, and we both can't go with the same one. Fort, we should do that, by the way. Mm -hmm. We should do a uh, a playoff pool. And let's, yes. let's not do it today, but let's maybe conduct it around like Post-Gazette people, see if people want to get in. You know, do like a March Madness style bracket. I love it. I love it. I, yeah. I'm really excited because last year during the playoffs, I'm going to make up for it this year. Last year during the playoffs, I think people know I was shifting into the senior sports writer role. It didn't totally work out. Missed baseball too much. Wound up coming back to it. But I missed a lot of the postseason last year. And I really love just delving into that, like watching games at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, staying up late at night. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Let's make that a thing on pitching in, and, and we'll run our bracket, and we'll talk some trash. We can bet a dinner. Uh, North Shore Tavern or Mike's Beer Bar or whatever, that'd be a fun way to do it. So, absolutely, fun. absolutely. I'd love that. And I think North Shore Tavern, Post Gazette, Mackey, McHenry should have a season recap at North Shore. That could be the opening segue into my love for their steak on a stone. What do you think? Assuming you like it. If you don't like it, then that, then we have problems. Mackey, if, I think you'll like if it. It's I mean stone, if it's on a stone and it's mooing, 
There's not many things I'm not gonna like. Let's be honest here. I mean, come on. No, man, you won't be disappointed. Trust me. Uh, that'll no, that'll be a lot of fun though. That'll be a lot of fun, and we'll do Absolutely. season recaps. We're gonna do uh, th this podcast. Will continue uh, probably through the majority of the off season, which is so you'll be mm -hmm. stuck with us for your baseball fix. I think we'll get a little bit uh, more wild, wacky, and wonderful um, in the off season. We'll delve into some topics. Fort and I have been sort of yeah. brainstorming what they might look like. Um, but yeah. So let's delve into something pertinent with this year's group, though, Fort, and, and what we've seen. Uh, ben Sherrington was on 93.7 The Fan uh, today, um, earlier today, this afternoon, whatever, for his show, saying that if everybody does their jobs as well as they can do them or at a high level, he fully expects the Pirates to be competitive in 2024. I think that can be taken any number of ways. You can look at it one way and say he's not really saying that much. I mean, yeah, you're going to be competitive. I think what Ben means, and, and I hope what Ben means, is that like you can look at them and evaluate based on performance. You can look at them, and if they're not over 500, if they're not at least in the wild card chase, if they're not making some sort of noise in the division, they they can and should be criticized. They can and should be accountable. Um, I'm glad we're here. It's taken a long time, but I mean, sooner or later, yes, you need to flip that to like results matter. Um, they couldn't explicitly say that results didn't matter in 2021 and 22, but let's be realistic. Um, and now that they are in this competitive mode, theoretically, uh, I'm excited to see what that means. But I want to roll the ball out to you this way. Being competitive, what does that mean in your mind for the Pirates in 2024? Well, first off, no harm, no foul to Ben Sherrington, but his opinion doesn't matter. What matters is what those clubhouse guys are saying. What they're saying in the clubhouse, I like, you know, Peggy in your He's interview. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, so I'm, I'm going to get there, I promise. But Peggy saying the other day, the belief is changing. Mm -hmm. The attitude's changing. The mindset's changing. Brucky said something absolutely outstanding. It may have been from your question. Sometimes they pull the mic just away so it's kind of faint. And I'm like, is that the ghost of Mackie's past? Or is that actually Mackie oh, asking this that question? This was not Mackie. This was not, I promised you this was um, not Mackie. It wasn't, it wasn't today. It was the other day. I think it's when he actually closed the game. Um, but he said, somebody asked, what's the difference? And he said, people are understanding the roles. They're understanding where they fit and they're coming together. The hardest thing to do. And I've said it over and over again is, you know, if you're into anything and you don't know exactly what you're supposed to be doing, you're learning on the fly. And the only way to learn is fail. These guys have failed, succeeded, failed, succeeded. And now we're seeing more consistency. I think the predictability of, Better play is happening. You're seeing Williams make outstanding plays, and you're seeing, man, now I get it. Seeing Peggy do some things, getting opportunities at the leadoff spot today, like really mm -hmm. good things that good teams do. And these guys have known each other for a long time, I think mixed with the right people coming in and the right attitude throughout the season and hopefully health. I think, yeah, they're going to be competitive. And what that means to me is, is playoffs, period, winning period. Not 82 wins, not 79 wins. I know this year the predictions for them are probably around 73. And with all the injuries and everything that's happened this year, I think we far exceeded expectations. And yeah. I, I think we're, we have a lot of great trends going in the right direction. I mean, you think about Palacios hitting fourth in our lineup. The reality of it is the guy didn't get invited to camp. He was rule five in the triple A rule five. We don't have five starters. We have two. We have two. Yeah. You know, we shut, we shut down most of our prospects to go to instructs and, they're already working on shaping pitches and everything, and they were all trending in the right direction. And there's still yeah. guys in AAA right now that are going the right direction. So with all that being said, I think they're hitting their markers in a better way than they could have imagined. Now it's yeah. like now the dudes that were supposed to jump off the charts, like Indy, Henry, and, you know, Cruz, bounce back, watch out. That, that, that sounds fun to me. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm certainly excited for 2024. I think there's a lot to look forward to. I, in looking at 2023 in totality for it, it's, it's wild to me that, I mean, I, I predicted 74 wins at the beginning of this thing. I've, I've been fairly consistent with that. And I still think it's going to fall there. I think it's probably going to be a little bit better than 74, but if you would have told me there's going to be no one, Neil Cruz, there's going to be no brew Baker, no uh, Mike Burroughs, no Velasquez. I, fairly expected Hill to be traded, but I mean, like you're saying to, to sort of limp to the finish line pitching wise with basically two in this new finagled opening situation and bulk guy, and you barely know who's pitching on a daily basis. It's pretty darn impressive. 
It, it, it really is. And what they've been able to accomplish with guys who are going to be here next year and kind of what we're talking about. I mean, we're, you're, you're asking them to do what they're doing right now. They're playing competitive ball and basically have been for two months. So you're asking that to continue. But for next year, I expect O'Neill Cruz to be back and healthy. I can expect Key Brian Hayes to be back at third base and producing with the bat, which has been a tremendous development. I've really liked what I've seen from Jack Sawinski. There's no concern whatsoever about Brian Reynolds. We're going to talk about first base, but give me, let's just say for the sake of argument here, give me Carlos Santana back. I'd really like that. Leo Pagaro right now looks like my second baseman. I guess I'm stealing the opening day lineup for 2024 question, but you know, there's guys. Just excited. Doesn't, that, it that's doesn't the clubhouse feel. I love it. Get from A to B, you know, to, to continue doing what they're doing right now. And then I think you go, need, you need to go out and supplement the pitching. They better realize that um, they need to get more pitching because I mean, there's some in the minors. You know, I like Jared Jones. Maybe um, you know Solomato comes up next year and impacts something. Paul Skeens is obviously going to be here at some point. You're going to get some injured guys back midway through, and that's fantastic. But I, I still don't think there's enough pitching. And so that's where I'd be spending money. But, yes, I mean, to look at next year and, and to sort of take my stab at it, I think being competitive means you darn well better be in the wild card chase. You need to clear 500. I think those two are, are the beginning ones. And then I want to see this, see them make some noise in the division. If they don't win it, that's completely fine. I mean, I'm not, I'm not expecting them to win the division. I don't, I'm not even expecting them to go to the playoffs. But to clear 500 and flirt with those things, I think, are a fair expectation. Yeah, I think it should be a fight to the death. Um, Cubs, fight. yeah, Cubs, Cincinnati, Pirates, and, and I would say, yeah, I think those three teams are going to be the last three teams next year. I think Milwaukee will be good. They're going to have a hard time signing back those those starters. I think uh, one or two, maybe even all three, are going to be free agents, um, and there's some sour taste there. So the division is going to be interesting. It's going to be a really strong division, and there's a lot of makeup to do in in the New Yorks in the big markets. And they're going to spend a lot of money, which is going to leave, you know, really good players on the block. And there's yep. players that could come from overseas. There's a lot of, you know, opportunity to sign, you know, the needs that we have. And you're just talking about some small steps forward yep. for me. And yep. you you didn't even say, like, what about Contreras taking 48 steps backwards? Or yeah. he's taking a step Oh, backwards. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Priester, yeah. Well, if now. any of those guys hit – I mean, think about it. If if Priester came up and just pitched like he did in the minor leagues, if Contreras pitched just like he did last year, which wasn't that good, and Ortiz didn't improve at all, you could argue that we would be a 500 team, maybe even a tick higher, because our division was that capable this year. But yeah. here, I'm going to use the Cubs as an example of where we could be. There's no reason with a guy like – they got the Cody Bellinger. If we find our, our hot ticket item that hits – and I think it could be Kutch. I think that's what type of year I think he could have next year being healthy. That hits. I think you could use the Chicago Cubs in their offense if we can find guys that are that reliable on the mound because their yeah. reliability is what made me pick them at the beginning of the year to win our division or come in second to Milwaukee because it was all about health for me. But then I've, I've spent <laughs> a lot of time – yeah, and I agree with you. Um, I've spent a lot of time thinking about how I would – best like the pirates to be constituted next year. Um, and I started this really I love when you use cool words like that. Constituted. constituted. Yeah. Like in this context, I loved it. It's okay. the writer in you. <laughs> You're a poet with but, your voice and your words. <laughs> I haven't updated my list for a while, but there's a running joke with Derek Shelton and the beat writers. Have you ever heard this? Mm -mm. Um, I love running jokes. So there's a random joke, running joke, whatever, with Derek Shelton and the beat writers um, about him using big words and marking them down. And so when he does, I put it in my phone. Um, like he used ad nauseum, osmosis, meritocracy, exponential, eclectic, vivacious. So like I, I – He's got that app. He's got word of the day app. No doubt in my mind. Oh, he well, he did. And this was a conversation topic. Uh, Brian Stroh signed him up for it. Or that's what he thinks. And oddly, I started getting word of the day. I think Alex Stump from DK Pittsburgh Sports started getting word of the day things too. So I don't know if Stroh went on some sort of binge about like signing everybody up for word of the day. But um, anyway, it's one of those things that makes baseball baseball, right? Like you, Absolutely. you can't 
I couldn't joke with Mike Sullivan about big words he uses during a press conference. Nobody's joking <laughs> with Mike Tomlin about big words that he's using during the press conference. I like that. But anyway, um, where was I going? I think you were going to ask me to come in and be a beat writer for a day and ask some questions. I think I should disguise no, that. I did that a couple not, years ago. Oh, how the pirates are constituted in 2024. That's what I was going yeah. to And I yeah. started out really wanting them to spend a lot of money on first base. And still, there's part of me that does. There's I can't find him. What? Who would it be outside Santana? I know. I know. It's I know. so hard to figure unless you move a guy from a position. No, I don't want to move a guy. I don't yeah. want to move a guy. And if Reese Hoskins is somehow available, I would be okay spending that money. I don't so, know if I see him being available. I did the research for you. Outside okay. of Andrew McCutcheon, the last like 10 or 15 guys I saw that had ACLs, it took them almost the next year to have that production back. Okay. And a right-handed hitter at PNC Park, unless he's Stanton or a judge, yeah. it's really tough to sign a power bat right-handed – but I am going to pitch to them to bring in that fence because I saw five balls we hit. Key Brian would have hit two extra home runs in 27 parks. And yeah. I was a right-handed guy that had gap power, and I yeah. watched my go to die, and I'm, I'm sick of it. We got a if lot of I, good guys. Let's go. All right. So I'm going through first base options just to make sure. This, this is how I got from A to B. Eric Hosmer, no. There's no way I'm doing that. Brandon Belt, CJ Crone. Would you bite on either one of those? And I don't think you would because we've had this conversation uh, off air. No. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm back and forth too. Um, and where I'm at, and I, I think maybe ris- listeners, viewers might feel differently, but I'm kind of in the camp of like, let's spend the money on pitching and get Carlos Santana back to address, I think, defensive first base, which has really like been noticeable the the, the uh, Friday night, Alfonso Rivas not being able to keep the ball in front of him. And by and large, he's been good defensively. But I liked the defensive first base that Carlos Santana played. I think there's enough there. Uh, the more I see Jared Triolo over there, the more I think maybe you just rotate him in and out. I think Santana could probably come cheap. I think he liked being here. I think he felt valued here. I think O'Neill Cruz would really like him here. I'm really in the camp of just giving Santana another whack at it and, and spending the money that I would save getting another pitcher. I really think that's the best thing for this team for it rather than go. I, I don't think I'm getting enough value with my step from like Santana to, to crone or belt or whomever. I think I'd rather just get Santana and go spend on pitching. Yeah. And I, I told you before we got in here, Triolo playing first base and playing it like he's a gold glover is more he, proof that they're fiddling is. with thought. Yeah, his defense is so good, and if he can hit enough and he seems to be able to play well enough with, you know, at bats here, at bats there, he doesn't have to play every day. If that's a if that's a thing, I mean, that solves an issue where you can bring back Santana, give him some DH spots, throw cut and right, move guys around to where guys stay fresh that are aging a little bit, but at the same time, you know, you're setting guys up for success. Yeah. Because you know, we have a lot of guys that have some similarities – when they, when when it comes to offense, so it's hard to set the lineup and get guys for success. But I think if you could get Connor Joe in there every time he was going to, you know, be hot and then sit him for five, six days when he gets ice cold because he goes back and forth, then you get his value off the bench that we haven't had since April in, in May. I know. I know. I love Connor Joe as a bench guy. I don't love him as much as uh, as an everyday player. I agree, but he's taking he a huge left, step forward. Yeah. What's that? He's taking a huge step forward when it comes to like where I think he'll end this year. It'll be really close to, you know, 770 OPS, 780 OPS. His yeah. defense is, is trickling in the right direction at first base. It's been a plus almost all year out and right and left. So I think he's better than serviceable. And I think he's in his prime. You know, he made a big adjustment coming into this year, bought in. It went really well. And I think his legs started to wear down. And now yeah. he, he bounced back and now it's like, uh, played a ton again. That's hard when you're, you know, trying to figure out where you fit. No, I think right. he's going to put it together. The, Henry Davis is my wild card. He's he's it, he's yeah. he's the game changer for me. Yes. Um, we'll get there in one second. One of the, one of the things I think is an interesting question about this, and this is just my mental process thinking through this thing, where 
first base, I typically want to get a guy that's going to hit 30 plus homers. That's really going to anchor my lineup, probably hit cleanup. You know, I know the bat's going to play. And I think for some of those guys that I read off, you know, Reese Hoskins, Belt, uh, Crow, I, I feel a little iffy on those two, but you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, I don't know if they're going to hit 30 homers, but you know, the theoretically add some pop. Okay. But the pirates are a little bit inverted, right? Like most teams don't have a shortstop that's going to hit to the level that I think O'Neill Cruz can hit to. So, okay. If I can skimp a little bit on the first base mm-hmm. side of things, I know I'm going to get it from shortstop. I'm kind of okay with that. And, you know, theoretically they should have an above average catcher. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we can talk about Andy or whatever, but I think there's a lot more there than we've seen. Even if it's Henry, if they end up catching him, I think there's more there as well. I think the pirates are just going to wind up getting offense from non-traditional spots. I'd like to think that, you know, they can maybe replicate that in a different way and that not necessarily have to spend on somebody who I think def- defensively isn't very good. You have an option there who's been one of the the best or the second best defensive first baseman in baseball. I, I would just go that route. So I'm done now. Well, I, I go back to when we had Vogelbach and uh, Chavis. If you put their numbers mm-hmm. together, their platoon split were at that time was a top 10 hitter in the big leagues before they got traded. Together, they one couldn't hit righties and one couldn't hit lefties. But you yeah. put them together, they were a really, really good pair. They had like right at 20 homers. They were driving in runs. Their production was pretty wild. And I think getting creative like that works. Problem is, is you know, Vogelback didn't play first base. You know, he was pretty much primarily DH. And Chavis yep. was the shortest first baseman in the history of MLB. So that was tough. Um, was he really? Yeah, I think they can put it together. I think G1 base on base percentage, huh? Was he really the shortest first baseman in in Major League history? No, history? it's just it's just when you when you when you look over there, you know, when I see Triolo, he's six four, and then R- Revis goes over there. I'm like, wow. I was watching him do early work the other day, and I was like, yeah. the difference in size and target is such a vast like difference with those two. And then I thought about Chavis. I was like, Chavis was probably an inch shorter or two inches shorter than Revis. I hate that. So it that, just kind of blew me away a little. I hate that. Like, here we are talking about Carlos Santana. He could win a gold glove. It's going to be what, him or Christian exactly. Walker? He's 5'11". Mm-hmm. And if, you know, I wrote the thing about he, Hey, I guarantee if he did a combine reach, dude's got a long reach. I mean, okay. And he maximizes it. We're, we're saying yeah. he's too sh- – we're, we're saying somebody, you know, oh, too short, too short, You're too right, short. Right. Even when I wrote the McCutcheon I remember thing. remember, I'm 5'9", Mackie. You're seven feet. So, like, yeah. short is perspective here. You know, when I <laughs> see an eye, a guy eye to eye that short, anything above is – I mean, you're a giant to me. <laughs> I mean, there is. Uh, I'm 6'4". <laughs> um, you know, when I wrote the McCutcheon first base thing, like, even if you think that's the dumbest idea on the planet, which I respect that idea, but people were saying, oh, he's too short to play first base. You can't because of the height. No, yeah, I, mean, I agree. It's five eleven, cut just five ten. It's if he stinks at first base, it's not because of his height. It's because he never played the position. Anyway, oh, absolutely. absolutely. And we have a way better infield with, than we did for Chavis. You know, so yeah, and he was he no was doubt. good defensively. Okay, like, we uh, every year at the end of the year, Mackie, I, I start looking at guys and maybe some of the trends that could go back in the right direction from their past. And there's yeah. a lot of guys that you can look at. Like if everybody on our team does what has been pretty much a trend on our team. The better swing decisions, if all the young guys take that step forward and get closer to where they were in the minors, just closer, we're a different yeah. team automatically. You're right. Bay's starting to swing the bat better, but he's not walking. Yeah. I think Key Bryan's walk rate is going to continue to jump and the power is going to it's going to stay. I think Connor Joe's slowly figuring out he's going to have to swing outside of the zone at times. Yeah, and pick and choose because he's doing that now. He's trying to figure out how to do it. I've watched Jack Sawinski and Triolo work, and what they're trying to do is really, really cool. I think Triolo high ceiling could be DJ LeMahieu 2.0, and maybe even a better athlete at that. And that's saying yep. a lot to me because that's the best second baseman I ever played with. And I played with Neil Walker. Yep. You know, I played with some really good players, but that dude is a different animal. And I see Triolo. The more I talk to him, the more I watch him move, the d- defense and his approach, and what they're trying to do with his approach. He could be DJ 2.0, and that would be huge. So 
I kind of look at it like that, that Indian Henry are, are my, if they put together 85% of what they've been in the minor leagues, we're a playoff team without a question. Yeah. Offensive. Yeah. Very big. I mean, Indy, Indy's, Indy's got nine RBIs and two home runs. You know, like I know. last year he hit, what, 26, 25, and hit 320. Yeah. I know this it's minor leagues, big leagues. For Indy. Think, oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think the toll of all of that and the fact that they're saying, hey, you're a part of this. That's the one thing I said I heard Ben Sherrington say is a lot of guys in this clubhouse know that they're a part of it moving forward. Yeah, that belief in them is going to elevate them. That's something the Cubs yeah. had. That's something that the Reds had. That's something we I, have not had yet. I would like to see the Pirates send those guys away with very clear roles. Maybe this is my OCD or something taking over, but I, I would like to see them handle Henry by saying, look, Henry, you're our right fielder. You're going to be our right fielder every day. We're going to play 150 games out there as long as you can – you know, physically handle it, but we need you to be competent in right field. So we're going to punt on the catching thing. Andy's a better catcher. Andy, you're a catcher. This is what we need you to do. We need you to be the best possible catcher you can be. Uh, you're going to play as much as your body can handle it. And that's the way we're going to roll. Don't, don't worry about, you know, splitting the two of them and Henry catching and Andy playing other positions and all this stuff. I would give them clarity. And I would also give them clarity with the hopeful trade-off that the offense comes around as well. That like, you know where you're going to be. You know what you're going to do. I need you to work on these things, but I also need you to hit more. Like I need Andy's bat to be plus. I need Henry's bat to be plus. Um, I think they can get there, but I would try to do everything I could in my power, you know, everything in my power to make that happen. What is justifiable for him to play right field offensively and be an average defender in your mind, Henry. Um, I mean, for his age and whatever, I, seven seventy-five OPS, maybe higher. Twenty plus bombs. Okay. Because I, I think know. you said something to me to, the other day, and I, I think it's so true. I think his personality—you give him a wall to run into, he'll run through it. So right. if you tell right. him you are the right fielder. I think back in his mind, he'll still catch in the offseason, still try to have that because I desire to do is going to come back full fold this offseason. And yeah, I really believe that is something that it's going to be hard to not scratch that itch. But if you told him, I want you to be a plus defender in right field, I watched Corey Dickerson become a gold glover. Mm -hmm. He was one of the worst outfielders I'd ever seen. I saw him move out of the way of a Stanton line drive in Miami. I'll never forget it to a gold glover to the yep. will of Henry is very similar. Corey's personality started to switch. She got really, really cerebral. He got with the right people. And if you get with the right people, I would, if he comes to me or if I have a chance to tell him, I've got some people I'd love to introduce him to that. I think could really help him outside the organization. That's been a trend that's helped guys because you get a different perspective and then you get a group or a village helping you instead of, you know, guys that have to worry about 30 other guys, plus the organization, yep. plus their job, plus their salary, plus the benefits, all that stuff. So I believe it's going to come together. Okay. All right, Fort. But you convinced me the right field could be best. Okay. That was all you. <laughs> but he's going to want to I don't want credit. I don't want credit. I don't want credit because I'm going to take just as much egg <laughs> on the face for suggesting that Andrew McCutcheon should play first base. And I still think Andrew McCutcheon should play first base and I don't care. All right. So we got some questions on Twitter. I want to get through some of these and I want to ask you a fun thing relative to Mike Babcock's situation, um, Columbus Blue Jackets. But let's first go through some Twitter questions. I think there's some for both of us. First one is from Cameron Hoover, who, by the way, is a ringer, I believe, uh, one of our editors. Who does Fort think is his most underrated teammate? Who's your most underrated team? And I want these answers to be quick. we got to get through a lot of these. Most underrated teammate. Yep. Carlos Gonzalez. Why? Cargo. Because he'd go above and beyond if you're willing to ask. Uh, most people wouldn't ask. He was kind of intimidating, you know, yoked up, tatted, t 
tough mentality, but I would say him. And for me, probably too low too. Um, he was the Mamba, the Kobe Bryant of Colorado. I think he could have been one of the best shortstops to ever walk the planet if he wasn't built of glass. And the way he kind of took me in my last two years was really cool. Okay. Uh, let's keep going here. Um, how many pitchers currently in the organization do you think are going to be in next year's rotation? That is from Jack. Um, looks like Davis at Davis, please win. Um, so anyway, how many pitchers currently in the organization do you think are going to be in next year's rotation? Nine. You're in a nine man nine. rotation. Yeah. I think it takes nine to 12 guys every year. That's a season seven. rotation. You cop out. Yeah. I mean, you know, I love it. opening day, opening day rotation. How many people are in from this organization? I say three on the big league roster right now. Uh, maybe four. In our rotation, we have two starters. Starting so. rotation. Okay. So. Keller, Oviedo. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say one of Priester, Ortiz, Contreras. Um, and at this point, I'm going to say they go with an opener slot for one of them, which I don't know how you would constitute that, but that bulk guy would be one of them. So, I mean, that's, that's how I get there. What about you? Um, I'm going to go Keller, Oviedo. Jackson Ortiz. Okay. And then one more. So like the, there'd be one external ad in your model. There's, there's going to be a fight for that fifth spot. And I could see just like you, it could be Priester, it could be Contreras. I think all those guys they, they have to add, right? They yeah. Have to add at least it, one starter. One. We have the cool part we have Mackie is we have guys with options, which we have not had. That's not we that have, cool. That's not that cool. I'd rather them sign. Well, that's what I'm saying. You could, you could put, free agents and I don't give a, you know, what about their options? But here you go. You could put Ortiz options. You could put Priester options. You could put Contreras options down in the minor leagues and go sign three stud muffins and kind of play it by ear. And then you have a great triple A staff. The double A staff may be the best staff in baseball. If you yeah, put I mean, that together, I'm just yeah. saying. And then you have all these assets to say, Hmm. Let's get let's get in the cookie jar. Who do we want to go get? And you go grab somebody. Well, I mean that's 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 the thing. I mean, I want to see them go sign Lucas Giolito or or somebody. You know, I mean that would be my shooting high. And then you're going to go less than that probably. You know, again, like they do a nice job about signing guys who need opportunity, and maybe you go find a Luis Severino or somebody like that, or mm -hmm. Sean Manaya or something. I don't, I don't, I don't know, but. Or, or a bad contract somewhere, you know, like yeah. an AJ Burnett type. Yeah. Get a bad yeah. contract. You never know. Yeah. And, and no. by the way, I have something that I want you to think about, and this is kind of wild. Cincinnati Reds have a dispute with Joey Votto, decide not to bring him back. He signs with the Pittsburgh Pirates. That's the only guy I would pick over Santana. And I love Santana, but if Joey Votto became available and he was mad, all in and the best part is it With would make Kutch elevate to a next level for me yep. because yep. it would take that pressure that Kutch is dealing with that he's never dealt with which he'll be better at next year that yep. vocal leader and you get literally maybe the best vocal leader in all of baseball I agree I would like that a lot I'd yeah. be totally on board I I, I, if you're if you're the Reds I don't know how you'd let Votto get away from that situation but and Rizzo's my other one possible Rizzo Rizzo Mike Hmm? Anthony, <laughs> Anthony, r r r r the mic just got extended. He's good. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. All right. Zach Henry asks, what is one major thing for Andy and Henry to work on in the off season? Come back next year better than they are this year in Fort. I'm going to preface it now because I know you could talk about this for 35 minutes. We don't have 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I can answer this quick. Okay. Decide what they want to be and don't look back period. No organization. What do you want to be? If anyone wants to be the best catcher and real Muto, who I think he could be, but better offensively, then be it. If Henry wants to catch, tell the organization, I will be the catcher with Indy next year, and I'll be dropping bombs and playing right and first. That's what he needs to do. That's what he said in double-A to you and everybody else in the media said, I want to be in the big leagues. Yeah, I want that guy back. Yep. What about you? You got to feel that way too. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't – I agree with that. I would – let me answer it this way because I'm going to go with a little bit more of a, a granular answer. Mm -hmm. um, I want Henry to work on his right field. 
like the, the basic fundamentals of right field, playing a ball off the wall, um, catching a ground ball, transitioning that ball to my throwing hand, throwing to the right base, hitting cutoff men, um, routes, reads, that sort of thing. Like that's, that's what I want to see from Henry Davis. Andy Rodriguez, the throwing has been exceptional. I want to see him work on his receiving. I want to see him work on his blocking. And frankly, I want to see both of them work on their offense, but I'm already up to multiple things. So I guess I'm going a little bit more exact. You're going. If, if you had to pick one thing to make them move forward, since you took the long answer, like I normally do, what would you say? Like Indy Rodriguez, one thing. Blocking. Really? You know, he's really, he was a plus blocker last I looked. I don't think he is. I haven't looked in a while. And the throwing, the throwing numbers are very good. The throwing numbers are good. I think the receiving will grow just because for some reason it's very hard when you're a rookie. I unless think you're the receiving's market. overcooked because I think they're going to go to an ABS system and it's just not going to matter as much. That's uh, not as big of a deal for me. I'm hearing challenge system. Well, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I say oh. ABS. I mean challenge. Man, could you imagine today? I don't know if you saw that zone. And, oh, and, oh, man. I, dude, but it was consistent. It should happen yesterday. Yeah, it, it, the, the, we got into this last week, and it's mm -hmm. just, or maybe two weeks ago. But okay, let's get to a couple more here. Um, what other ones that I like? King Roland seventy three. Will Kane and Smith and Jig would get another shot with the major league club? I would think so. I'm a little surprised we haven't seen more of him. He's been really good over a not insignificant amount of time. He's on the forty man roster. I would think that they try to take another look at him, but. Miguel and Duhar has been productive. Um, you're not going to take Jack Sawinski out. You're not going to take Brian Reynolds out. Um, it's an interesting spot. You know, it's not like you can put Smith and Jigba at another spot. Like he's going to have to play outfielder DH. But I, I think I'd kind of like to know going into the offseason what they have in him. So I wouldn't be surprised there. Um, if I got something. I don't know where Palacios is with service time. But if he's on the roster, he's on my team, and you can't have both those guys. Period. Hmm. They like but, Palacios too. They like Palacios he, a lot. Here's here's the thing: is I think Smith and Jigma is going to be a, a good player. I don't know how good. Um, he's kind of an oddball for me, but I think he has value in the market. Yeah, because he's really young. He's really athletic. He's got Oppo Taco Pop, and I think Oppo. with the right opportunity, Oppo. you listen to yourself. Oppo Taco Pop. That doesn't make any sense. I'm not the writer. <laughs> I'm just, just. <laughs> all right. Last one. Largy Condios at Way Way Large asks, why do you think Rowanzi Ortiz Priester seemingly failed so far and lost velocity at ML in the MLB level this year? Um, I would start by pointing out that Priester got it back. And I think mm -hmm. one of the issues has been dealing with things biomechanically, trying to set these guys up for future success. I would argue filling their heads with a little too much at one time. I think we could probably have a debate about that. But I don't think it's injury. I don't think it's poor performance. I don't think these guys suddenly forgot how to pitch. I think they're just thinking too much. What about you? Uh, I think development has been the number one priority. I think the mind has been overcooked like a scramble egg, um, and that's just part of it. And you know, last thing is comfort. Yeah, you know, their confidence is not there. It's very hard when you, you know, are trying to stay here and you're making a good pitch and they hit it, you know, in the gap or, you know, ball hits the bag like today and Rendon's out of the game, you have to be able to deal with those things and understand, hey, they're betting on you. And yeah. I think, you know, it took Mitch Keller a long time. These guys are way – a lot of these guys are ahead of him where he was when he first was up here. I mean, you look almost two and a half years in, he had a six ERA. Yeah. Like, All right, Fort. So I teased this a little bit earlier. Mike Babcock of the Columbus Blue Jackets got in some trouble for asking players to show them their phones – um, was looking at pictures, believing, calling that uh, some sort of team building activity. Um, on one hand, I don't totally understand it. Like if I, if I was in that situation, I would just tell the coach, here's my phone. Like what, I'm not committing any crimes. I don't really care. At the other, the other side of it. Um, my what? phone, Mackie. I know, but are you doing anything on there that's illegal? No. No, but let me ask him the same thing. And hey, what's on your yeah, phone? Well, what's uh, okay. your picture album? Well, that, Ooh, that's what's what I was getting to. Section. Like, come yeah, on. I, I don't mean, have that in my phone, but like, you know, there's some dudes on there that probably do. That's just weird. Yeah, it, it's inappropriate. It's not. Yeah. You, you can't. You can't do that. You can't. Um, you know, and I, I understand people feeling like their, uh, you know, personal space is infringed upon or whatever. And he 
step down probably from pressure of the Columbus Blue Jackets, whatever. That's not our point. It's the baseball podcast. But for you played Major League Baseball. You played a lot in the minors. You had a lot of managers, a lot of organizations. Anybody ask you to do that? And please, you, you know, I don't want you to get in trouble. Don't name the organization. But any any interesting stuff there? Uh, no, but we, you know, there used to be this thing called Kangaroo Court. It used to be a blast. And then I got to a team that it turned into a tattletale box. Similar thing. No yep. name, no anything else. And the stuff that was put in there, it was a joke. It ruined our whole team for a little while. Hmm. And then finally, some of the older guys, we started putting in absolutely absurd things that made no sense. And it became a joke. But until then, like there was guys really tattletelling. And I would say the craziest stuff I ever had, and we'll get into this another day, is when I was in high A, I swear my <laughs> pitching coach had schizophrenia, bipolar, depression, anxiety, Superman syndrome, imposter syndrome, and everything else. Wow. Because the man changed every single day, and he would tell me something. I would do it and tell another player, and then the next day be completely different. So he, he did a lot of things that would probably get him fired really fast now, some abuse and everything else by accident. Um, but going to the next step is I did have some guys that would take phones, lock it up, so you knew you do the password so many times it locks up. Did that nine one one calls, pictures yeah. on the phone, locked phone screen. So when they come on, it's you know something that you know very similar to Babcock, yeah, or something to that nature. Uh, but all those jokes and silly stuff was there. Uh, calling girls on the phone and leaving messages, sending texts. Like I mean, that's just part of being a team. Being on that's a team, a team but. That was all within That's the player. Babcock, if I would show him my phone and I have illicit pictures on there, which I don't, but like if if they're of me and my wife or something like, like dude, what what that's not your business. That's Mackie, not your I business. smell you like a preschooler. He could go into my notes and be like, This guy's a serial killer because I can't spell and I'd write down my notes and sometimes it doesn't make sense because you know I grew yeah. up with dyslexia or whatever it is. I have some issues. So he could go and be like, dude, this guy's a psychopath. Like he yeah. could be murdering people at night, you know, and that's his opinion and he's the boss. It's not okay. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, that's your, and there's problem. a thing called the first amendment, you know, the thing that protects your rights to say things. He can well, get the phone. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, I don't know. It it's makes funny. me think that there's something else going on there. Absolutely. There, there had okay, to be. My something. point was not to dissect all of this. It was more to get your perspective as a former player. If you ever had anything similar. Now, now if I was a coach, I would take everybody's phone. If it came out of their uh, back pocket, while they're sliding in the third, like we would have a, they're <laughs> called, <clears throat> they're called phone sleeping bags. We would have a no phone zone in the locker room after that for a while. Like I'd ground everybody. Oh Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's totally real. Like, if you're in a meeting or something, you say leave your phones outside. I mean, that's no. I would say Castro, listen, you're going to collect these phones for two weeks. Yeah, like I think stuff like that's funny, and you never forget it. And I think that's what we used to do back in the day. But if a, if, for example, if Rod Barajas or AJ Burnett said, "Give me your phone," yeah, I said yes. If yeah. Clint Hurdle said, "Give me your phone," I'd run hmm. and go find AJ or Rod Barajas. When I was rookie. Because the reality of it is, is I know you didn't, you didn't well, I know who cares about me as a player and a person without the with, with the uniform on. Clint Hurdle would die for me without the uniform, but he has a job to protect. Yeah. AJ Burnett, he was gonna tell them exactly how he felt because he just came from a situation where he was, you know, beaten, dragged, and pulled away in New York, came to the pirate, and lo and behold, he is a pirate. Yeah. So I think that's where veteran guys really elevate a team. Okay. It just made me feel old because I know when I was playing college baseball, I could have handed my coach the phone and it wouldn't have had any pictures on it because it didn't have a camera on it. But it had snake. Remember yeah, snake? I think it did have snake. That's all I got. Well, how about this? Think about it like this. We grew up in the era of diaries. What do you not do? Read someone's diary. It's sure. kind of a phone nowadays. Sure. And You're I don't right. know if you've ever watched Billions. If you haven't, watch it. The latest episode I watched, he made it an, <laughs> a national security matter when a guy's phone got taken. Hmm. So, 
All right, we'll end there. Um, good episode this week, Fort. Nice yeah, that work. Was fun. Yeah. It's always always, fun to always enjoy our Sunday evening debriefings, um, which basically follow our Monday through Saturday debriefings that happen at the ballpark. Um, but anyway, uh, make sure to like and subscribe uh, button on here and keep up with us all week long. We'll be with you through the end of the season, as I said before, throughout the off season as well. Uh, for Michael McHenry, I'm Jason Mackey. Thank you for watching Pitching In. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Apple Podcast channel for more podcast content. Click below for a special deal of 99 cents for a three-month subscription to the Pittsburgh Post Gazette.